Greetings all, today we're going to be going over installing an external Prometheus into GitLab to get all those nice metrics. We'll be doing this on GitLab 12.0.2 and Prometheus 2.10.0, both servers will be running Ubuntu 18. To get started, I've gone ahead and installed GitLab on my GitLab server here. So um, what we're really going to start with is we're just going to configure GitLab to get ready for this. So to do this, we're going to edit the GitLab, GitLab RB file event is in the Etsy folder. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the very end here and paste our configuration. And so for our configuration, we already have this typed up, which makes this nice and easy. Um, I'm going to paste this here and let me go ahead and go over this. So we're uh, disabling the pr embedded Prometheus since we're using external. We're going to enable GitLab monitor and various exporters, namely the GitLab monitor, Redis, Node, and Postgres exporter. We're going to tell them to the various monitors what IP to bind to, in most cases, this will just be every interface, um, you know, and some of these will use the ports they're going to use. We're going to tell GitLab Monitor to bind to port 9168. We're going to whitelist localhost and our, um, our Prometheus server, and we're going to have it whitelisted through the internal IP. And we're going to set in some index options for querying the actual status. Now, keep in mind with Prometheus, there's a lot of um, authenticate authorization and authentication that doesn't actually occur. So generally you want to try to keep this internally, but for this example, we're just kind of going to go with external. We're going to save this and then we're going to run sudo gitlab ctl reconfigure and wait for that to complete. So with that reconfigured, we're going to go ahead and go to our admin panel in our gitlab instance. We're going to scroll down to settings and go to metrics and profiling. Go to the Prometheus tab and make sure that enable Prometheus metrics is enabled. If not, you're going to need to save that and restart GitLab. Most of the time it's already enabled, so we're good to go there. So from here, we're going to go ahead and work with Prometheus. And to do this, we're going to go over to our Prometheus server and we need to install it. So to first start, we're going to do an app get update. With that done, we're then going to add a user for Prometheus and set their shell to bin false and tell it not to create a home. We'll do that through user add dash dash no dash create dash home and then dash dash shell bin false. With that, we need to go ahead and make some directories here. So we're going to make the Etsy Prometheus directory and we're going to make the varlib Prometheus directory. Now, because we just made these as roots, they're going to have root permissions. So we need to go ahead and CHO them for Prometheus. So we'll go ahead and do that. Next, we need to go ahead and download the binaries and all that fun stuff from Prometheus. So since I'm using 2.10.0, I'm just going to go ahead and download that tar file. With that, we need to go ahead and extract the tar file. And then we need to go ahead and copy some of these things. So we're going to copy the Prometheus binary to user local bin. And we're going to copy the prom tool to user local bin as well. Next, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we CHO in those to Prometheus so they have the proper permissions. Now we need to go ahead and co copy over the consoles over to Etsy Prometheus. And we need to copy over the console libraries to Etsy Prometheus. And once again, we're gonna go ahead and CHO in those. Okay, now with that done, we need to go ahead and edit our Etsy Prometheus from Prometheus.yaml. Now this file is likely not to exist, so we're going to create it. And then we need to paste in some configuration. We've already got this typed up, so we're going to go ahead and paste this in. But going over this, um, we're setting a scrape interval for 10 seconds, and then we're setting some scrape configs. We're setting a job for called Prometheus with a scrape interval of 5, and it's pulling static configs from the target localhost 9090, which means it's querying itself just so we can also get its own health state. We're also going to set up GitLab metrics. The metric path is going to be slash dash slash metrics. And the target will be our GitLab server and then port 443. We're going to set up the node exporter job. And its target is our GitLab instance and then 9100 for the port. For Redis, once again, the GitLab instance and then port 9121. Postgres, GitLab port 9187. And then the GitLab monitor exporter will be running the GitLab server colon 9168. Now with that all in place, we're going to go ahead and save that file. Since we just created that as root, we need to make sure we CH on that as well. And then we want to go ahead and make a service file just so this is a little easier to work with. We'll do that at C systemd system prometheus.service. 
already have this all typed up as well. If you're familiar with systemd service files, this won't look too strange to you. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. And next we need, since we created a service file, we wanna go ahead and do a diamond reload. And we're gonna go ahead and start Prometheus. And then we wanna go ahead and get the status of Prometheus. And it's running. We we'll also want to make sure that this, you know, stays up. This starts on boot, so we're going to enable Prometheus, and that'll create our symlink. Now, with that done, we now have got Prometheus set up, and it is scraping properly. So from here, we can access our Prometheus server. So we can go over to another tab and go to our Prometheus server colon ninety ninety, and here we've got Prometheus up and running. We've got many metrics to choose from here. We've got, you know, there's the node exporter stuff. There's our Postgres. If we keep scrolling, we'll see some various other things for the Prometheus itself. We'll see the Prometheus server stats. If we keep scrolling, there's Redis. So you see how you have a lot of metrics to go from. And I just kind of wanted to show some, you know, brief, brief queries here. So let's say we needed to find long running user processes where they've, their CPU time is over 1,000. We can do node underscore CPU underscore seconds underscore total. Tell it the mode is user because we want user processes. And then we want things over a thousand. Now in this particular case, I have no data. So let's go ahead and do a hundred, which is quite low. And then we can get where we see that the job node exporter was taking this much CPU, was taking this much CPU time on these various CPUs. We could also do a query to find where our sidekick queues are over zero, meaning they have jobs. I have no data as this has no sidekick queues at the moment. And, you know, we can also pull up the, see which networks are actually responding, not responding by saying, okay, well, show me the node network up is zero and that'll pull the node instance. In this case, the only one reporting not working is loopback, which is completely fine. With that done, we've got Prometheus set up externally and we're good to start querying and having our fun. And that's really all there is to it.